Hello everybody, my name is Liz Fujita. I'm an academic advisor and outreach specialist here in electrical and computer engineering at Michigan Technological University. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about two grants that we've been awarded through the Michigan Space Grant Consortium that will take place during the 2020-2021 school year, both geared at K-12 outreach efforts. Today's presentation will be relatively brief. I'm going to introduce the folks who are involved in these projects give a little bit more detail about both of the grants, and then wrap up with some of the COVID-19 related dilemmas, as well as future goals of both projects. To begin with, the main people. One is myself. I'm an academic advisor and outreach specialist, as I mentioned in the introduction. I'm also working with our chair, Dr. Glenn Archer, who's a principal lecturer here in the department and a huge advocate for K-12 educational outreach. And we're also partnering with our colleague, Dr. Gretchen Hine, who's a lecturer in the MMET department and the faculty advisor to the Society for Women Engineers here on campus. The first grant that we were awarded deals with near peer mentorship. So what we mean by this is we're gonna be working with students at several different levels. Our plan is to have college students teach high school students who will teach middle school students who will teach elementary school students. The high school students will start with the most complicated project, and this will be taught to them by current undergraduate and graduate students. These heart rate monitor boards are meant to teach them about the basics of circuitry and electronic components. They're going to learn about resistors, ICs, LEDs, capacitors, and soldering. So they'll attach all the different components under the guidance of our current students, and then when they put their finger on the sensor, the lights will flash. After they've learned all this, the high school students will teach middle school students how to solder on these little tree-shaped boards. These were originally designed, um, you can see the middle prototype there, and uh, they're designed to be similar to the heart rate monitor board, but just a little bit easier. Slightly fewer components, a little bit less to worry about, but still gets the basic idea across. So we continue down this near-peer mentoring chain after the college students have taught the high school students have taught the middle school students, and those middle school students are going to do one more basic circuits activity with elementary school students in their school. So this last activity at the end of this near peer mentoring chain is really where our partnership with Dr. Hine and the Society for Women Engineers comes in. This activity is called the Bouncy Bot for reasons that will become obvious in just a moment. The activity itself is very straightforward. The students attach a tiny vibrating disc motor to a plastic cup, and they attach the leads of the battery holster to their motor. When they plug in the batteries, they're going to see the reward of talking about kind of how circuits work, um, power sources, and things like that. And this is where we really feel that the near-peer mentoring thing is the most valuable. By having the students at each level teach the next level down, they're reinforcing and sharing the knowledge that they gained. So just to reiterate and clarify, this grant is the result of multiple partnerships. In addition to our own local schools, we intend to take this activity set on the road down to Detroit Cristo Rey and potentially one other school downstate. This is all going to require a lot of working together within the university as well, between us in ECE with our honor societies and our enterprise teams, as well as the Society for Women Engineers. So we look forward to seeing how all of this kind of comes together once we're able to get on the road and take this into the classrooms. Moving on to the second MSGC grant that we are working on. Uh, so this one came as a result of the call for proposals that went out earlier this year for virtual outreach. What we're doing with this is we are going to be building a lending library of mobile devices that students can use in a workshop centered on coding. So for this, we are utilizing the MIT App Inventor, which is a web-based platform where students can build simple apps. They use um, a scratch type programming language and it pairs with a companion app on their mobile devices so that they can see the app coming to life in real time. As you can see in the video here, you wanna be able to pair the code that you're working on on your desktop or laptop or Chromebook with a mobile device that will respond and show you what that looks like in real time. So as the students edit their code, they can test it out maybe see if their password settings work or if they can create a push button application or even moving into more complicated applications that utilize the sensors that are built into their devices. So 
So coming back to this slide really quickly, what I wanted to highlight was the reason that we went after this grant. So we piloted this workshop fairly early on in the pandemic and we worked with one of our local schools. The students had a really good experience, but we learned very quickly that students working with a wide variety of devices was a huge roadblock. We had some people working with school Chromebooks with an iPhone, we had some students working with a desktop and an Android, and not every device plays as nicely with the MIT App Inventor as other devices, even though this is a free and fairly accessible platform. Uh, and so what we wanted to do was just make it so that any school we worked with could sort of level the playing field for any student who was interested in doing this and getting the full experience. So what the teacher who we worked with said was basically that it was very clear that the students who were able to use an Android device were more engaged in the learning process. You know, rather than looking at it on an emulator or just sort of theoretically, they were able to see the response of their app in real time. Providing these devices to students really makes sure that everybody can experience the real code on a real device. It reduces some technical glitches as well because we don't spend as much time troubleshooting from device to device, and it just removes barriers to this kind of educational workshop. So one of the things that is fairly obvious that we really need to talk about are some of the COVID-19 related dilemmas with both of these grants. Um, the primary barrier that we face currently is that a lot of our schools are not meeting in person, or if they are, it's kind of hybrid and certainly has restrictions on visitors. So the likelihood of us being able to have 30 students all solder their heart rate monitor boards and then go down the hall and teach 30 middle schoolers how to solder their tree boards is very low. There are also pretty obvious technical learning curves associated with remote instruction for our virtual outreach. Uh, we've considered shipping everything to the schools, and we may do that anyway, but that requires logistical concerns of cleaning, shipping, and teaching safety. We have unknown timelines on when we might be able to get back into a school. And for all of this, we are relying on some of our own in-house ECE students to help develop curriculum or build those outreach kits. And some of those students are not on campus this semester. So our access to student help is also a little bit limited. So what all of this means for both of the grants, at least at time of recording, which is ahead of this conference, uh, is that we are being flexible. With the virtual lending library of devices, we are going to go ahead and implement that because that's what it was designed to be. So we're hoping to find some schools, if needed, drop off those devices that students can use and be on our merry way because the way that that was designed was to be delivered by Zoom in the first place. For the heart rate monitor tree bouncy bot grant, our primary focus is going to be on purchasing everything that we need and really dialing in on preparing all of the kits. That's more than enough kits to keep us busy for this semester, so we want to focus on getting everything together, purchase all the soldering stations, and just be ready so that when we're able to interact with students in the classroom and everyone can feel safe, we're prepared to go and do it. Okay, so with that, I want to thank you for listening to our presentation. If you have any questions for us about either of these projects, please feel free to contact us at any of the information listed on the closing contact card. Thank you so much.